Peace, peace, family. We here with Yaki Awaken. We on the Health and Liberation Tour. We touching down in Philly right now. As y'all can see behind me, sold out, sold out. We wrapped around the corner. We got beautiful gods and goddesses here gathered for this beautiful event. This is by far the biggest one that we've done so far. I'm telling y'all, this tour is something different. If you're not tapped in, you need to tap in right now because we got more dates like this coming up. This is going to be something special, y'all. This is history in the making right now. I ran into Yaki about two years ago, not physically, but I saw him on TV. Mm. And he blew my mind, man, and I knew where he was coming from, so I connected with him just like that. He's brought a lot of new information yes. that is so important for us. Right, just and it, it is so important. I'm so grateful that I've ran into his YouTube page. It's about three months that I woke up three o'clock in the morning and I was just flipping through yeah. and I clicked on it and it was stories she wrote. Yeah. And here I am today. All right, are y'all ready? Y'all know what I'm his manager. I got calls right now from Israel. I got calls right now from Mexico City. I got calls right now from Johannesburg. I got calls from all over the country, but guess what, Philly? He's here right now for you. Come on and stand in your feet. Let's show some love to Yaki! You have to get away from artificial intelligence. Everybody think their artificial intelligence is a robot. We've been in a robot. We've been in a robot called the Matrix. We've been in a, a make-believe Earth called Earth. This stuff is make-believe. We are in a sensory deprivation tank being fed reality. And the moment you stand up and unplug and see this thing for what it really is, we can cripple the system. And I'm not talking about through war and through fighting and through bloodshed. I'm talking about with the elevation of one's mind. This is the biggest weapon you have. And it's full of melanin neurotransmitters, by the way. So first thing we have to get away from is artificial information. CNN, NBC, Fox, all of these different things. While you are asleep, they create your entire reality. Be careful with the news and everything you watch. Half of it is fake anyway. Have you ever heard of crisis actors? Well, they will plan a pandemic. They will plan a, a, a catastrophic event. They will actually, there's ads where you can go and you can get paid for being there. So they'll blow up something and have you running, falling over. Then you will see the same actor in another event and you'll be like, hold on, man, that person looks familiar. Then you start Googling and searching and that same person that popped up in so many type of events, supposed to be dead third, the, for the third time and still alive. And then you start Googling crisis, uh, crisis actors and this is a real thing. And then you see who actually funds these programs and you start hearing words like DARPA. You start hearing words like CIA. If you can control the information of a people, you can control their mind. So, artificial information, bump that. Let's create our own television news. Let's create our own conscious news. Let's start reporting our own events that we see with our own eyes. You see what I'm saying? It's time for us to control our information. Y'all get that? So, artificial information, next slide. Artificial foods. We are dying for convenience. Literally dying for convenience. And the crazy thing is, we have been so mind bottled, war have been waged against our intellectual properties to the point where we will spend 500 to a thousand dollars on a outfit, but then pull up in a fast food restaurant line and spend two to five dollars on a happy meal. So you spend two to five dollars on a happy meal, but you will spend a thousand dollars to look good. You too busy worried about the flesh and you ain't worried about what's going in the temple. And the temple is the body of God. How can God sit and rest within you if you full of rotten flesh and you are using your body as a graveyard and a coffin for dead animals and milk and pus and all these things that actually lessen your radioactive frequency of your body? When are you going to stop being a graveyard? 
for innocent creatures that don't need to be ate for food. Oh, but I forgot. Information. According to artificial information, you need protein. Matter of fact, you need about 80 protein grams of protein per body weight or some nonsense they say. I can't even remember it. I, I deprogrammed that out of my mind years ago. It's the information. Let's change the information and we can revamp the education of our people. So we need, and y'all understand what education means? Education is when you meet the needs of a people. For instance, our problem is police brutality. Our problem is so-called high disease. Our problem is cancer running rapid through the community. Our problem is the black male is being stripped from the household. Our problem is women are made to be masculine and men are becoming feminine. These are our problems. Mathematics ain't our problem in the community. So why are we focused on mathematics in school? We need to be focused on training. We need to be focused on skills. We need to be focused on how to teach males how to be masculine. We need to be focused on how to teach the women to be more feminine. We need to be teaching the man how to protect, how to provide, how to be proactive, how to produce, how to form. The next problem is food scarcity. But ain't nobody learning how to form. Other problem is tainted water. Who is digging wells and learning how to get well from the geothermal depths of the earth? So we are learning the wrong things. You learn to fix problems for your people. We are learning to fix problems for other people. That's why you go to school, then you get a nine to five, but you never become wealthy. But you are sending other people's children to school to become doctors, lawyers, to bring generational wealth. We have to break that cycle. Y'all see that? And I'm not here being prejudiced. I'm not here being racist. I'm here being real. Yes. Seriously. Artificial food. Artificial information. Artificial foods. Next slide. Artificial murders. Because this is murder regardless. Just because you can go do it legal don't make it right. Huh? We are at war. And we are giving birth to kings and queens and to soldiers to help stand up to liberate the minds of the people. And guess what we doing? We are willfully going to get them ripped out of us. And then they chop these little bitty infants or embryos up into pieces, sell them to colleges. The colleges then use chemistry and they extract all types of different tissues from the kidneys and from the lungs. And guess where they put them at? In your food and in your vaccines. Oh, we. And this is a satanic ritual, by the way. To do some things like that, you have to be satanic as hell in the first place. So, artificial food, artificial information, artificial birth, and artificial murder. You see the artificial here, this, this fake reality that has been built for all of y'all, including myself? So when we gonna stand up and decripple this thing? Next slide. Uh-oh, artificial liquids. You don't want the H3O2 or the H2O. You want the fermented drinks. And look, the crazy thing they call it wine and what? Spirits. And then you look at an Arabic word called algal. And that's what the word is for alcohol. And it's literally a flesh binding eating spirit. And if you look at what cirrhosis of the liver is when you drink, what happens to the acidic medium, how it literally eats the liver and the flesh alive, you say, dang, it's way deeper than what we think. So, artificial information, artificial food, artificial birthing, artificial murders, artificial liquids. You're not even drinking the right thing. Next slide. Uh-oh. Artificial foods due to artificial cultures. It's artificial because it's not your culture. Do you know what's crazy? Do y'all know the Chinese don't even eat fried rice with soy on it? They're smart enough to know to take the haul off the rice. You have been taught that white rice is bad for you. Do you realize it's actually the opposite? The reason why they have white rice is because they took the black haul off of it in the first place because the black haul is full of phytic acid and it's full of mineral binding chemistry. So they realize how to haul it and leave that white flesh in the middle and eat it without soy. But you're gonna put soy sauce on it. They put soy on it to turn it that color. You wanna get you some shrimps, which ain't nothing but sea cockroaches to put on it. Shrimp fried rice. And they're sweeping off the sediment from the bottom. They're turning a lot of that material into their own uh, bodies. And that the shrimp are able to use a lot of things that would otherwise pile up and be kind of slimy and not very attractive to swimmers. 
and these shrimp do clean up the water. They're filter feeding out a lot of organic material and turning it into shrimp, which turns into fish food and various other kind of things within the food web. Huh? Extra sweet and sour. Extra diabetes on the side. Let me get that best soda too. Will we? So, artificial information, artificial food, artificial birth, artificial education, artificial culture. This is not your culture. And what's crazy is they're selling a culture to you that's not theirs because they don't eat that bull crap. And you better be careful because you will find some rat fried rice up in there. More than a million pounds of rat meat is sold as boneless chicken wings in the USA. And I'm not saying it to mock them. I'm saying that that's true. That has been found. Rats and mice been inside of your chicken fried rice. And if you look and you really start studying religion and concepts, when you use the mouse and you eat the mouse, this is a satanic ritual. And that's why when you read the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 1 and out, he says he's coming to destroy those who eat the pork, the swine, and the mice. So we're involving ourselves in satanic rituals, and we don't even know it. Because you are asleep in a sensory deprivation tank. When are you going to wake up? Next slide. Uh-oh. Let me stand back. Somebody might throw a pen at me. Artificial information. Artificial news. Artificial intelligence. Artificial food. Artificial births. Artificial murders. Artificial culture. Artificial hair. When you queens going to really crown yourselves by taking off somebody else's crown. The scripture says that your hair is your glory. Do y'all realize that the hair is the extension of the nervous system? Yes. How can your non-ether hair communicate with the sun if you covering it up with somebody else's hair? <laughs> if you relieve yourself of all these things, this is your true liberation and freedom. Y'all get where we're going with this? Let's see what else. Next slide. Artificial frequencies. Did you know living next to an airport or the train tracks automatically take 10 years from your life? Did you see the statistics on the actual cancer? Prostate cancer, breast cancer, and throat cancer, living by these things? You need to be in more rural-like areas. We need to be in nature because we are a reflection in a people of nature. Do y'all realize there is actually a, a psychotic label that people go through and they get depressed and they did a study on it and it was because they wasn't in nature. They realized like, dang, this, this person ain't sick. This person don't have the big disease. This person ain't been by no trees and been by no water and been by no grass. Do you realize it's a different frequency when your eyes look at water and your eyes interpret trees and chlorophyll? It does something to the electrical magnetic spectrum of your body and it heals and it purges the cells of all toxemia, meaning that it's essential that we get sunlight and that we get nature, we get natural water and that we get wind and breath. You are made to be outside. Who started creating all these things? Homes and building them with concrete. Then you go into ancient uh, America, you start studying ancient Africans and they built their houses with dirt, with mud, because they needed to, to stay connected to the earth. But what we do, huh? we get into the concept of steel. We get into the concept of concrete, blocking out the sun. Do you realize that the sun cannot penetrate concrete? But you in concrete buildings all day. Chasing the bag, not living your life, because you stuck in this sensory deprivation tank. So we got artificial information, artificial foods, artificial birth, artificial death, artificial cultures, artificial news, artificial intelligence, artificial frequencies. We have to get away from this. Next slide. Next slide. Artificial white noise do y'all realize how distorted living in the city is y'all both of y'all from philly y'all probably never heard the real true sound of nature it's like a symphony out there 
You hear the cicadas, you hear the lightning bugs, you hear the grasshoppers, you hear the crickets, and the shit be in tune. It's a straight dance, you can straight dance to it. It's a symphony in nature. And when you actually study the hertz and the frequencies that come from the insects, that come from the bugs, that come from the amphibians, it's a tune that tunes at a five to eight frequency. Do anybody know what love frequency? Oh, dang, I just told y'all, damn. <laughs> That is the love frequency. And do y'all realize that love is the number one nutritional value in this realm? Love. They did a study to show that, and they did it with orphanages. And they showed that the people in the orphanage that got hugged on, that got tucked in bed, that, that got read bedtime stories, that they actually spent quality time with and gave them less proper food, they was more nutrition than the people that didn't get none of that but ate good. Showing you that love is actually nutritional. It's an ingredient. That's why people that cook food with love, it just tastes amazing. You can do the same step, but if you don't love it, it ain't gonna taste the same. Because love is an ingredient. Say that with me. Love is an ingredient. Y'all be cooking with love? Or y'all just be putting extra seasoning salt on the food? <laughs> so, artificial news, artificial information, Artificial birth, artificial intelligence, artificial foods, artificial culture, artificial noise, artificial frequency. What else we got? Artificial sweeteners. Oh, we. Brown sugar. You think because the sugar, the color of you, it tastes better or it's healthier. No, that is isolated chemistry. My grandma used to think she was doing something with brown sugar. Brown sugar gave me diabetes. I had to heal myself with diabetes from Grandma Brown Sugar. Brown Sugar. A lot of people think, you know, which sativa. Y'all love the sativa. Well, get us what y'all love. Agave. And then you really study agave and how agave is actually sour in its natural essence. And what makes it sweet is when you heat it up to high temperatures and it changes the chemical molecular structure. So everybody run the agave game and you start listening and you start listening to your body. You don't need added sweeteners. They're already in the taste buds. You just need to cleanse the molecular structure so you can truly taste your food. Artificial information, artificial news, artificial birthing, artificial murders, artificial cultures, artificial air, Artificial noise, artificial frequency, artificial sugars. Next slide. Uh-oh. Artificial God concepts. Is that Jesus? That's Cesar Bonjour. <laughs> yeah, somebody's feelings gonna get hurt tonight, I promise you. Let's talk about artificial concepts and artificial images to mold and shape the minds of our children to make them artificial. The brain absorbs and synthesizes visual information faster than any other stimuli, making visual content an incredible, effective medium. You will process an image faster than you will process a damn word, just by the look of it. I grew up with this in my household. I grew up thinking that as long as you was this, this color, you straight had superiority over me. Because I was taught that Jesus was coming to save me. I was taught that Jesus was my savior. I was taught he was going to crack the skies, he was going to come and rapture everybody up for my struggles. He just never came. And I wonder why. I'm like, wait, why he ain't came? And then I started studying and reading. I'm like, well, if we black, wouldn't our God be black? And that's a good question, right? So, we have to stop doing this to our children. If you want to create a God concept, me, I don't believe that the Most High has a body. I believe that we are reflections of the Most High, but that's my concept. You can believe what you want to believe, but when your belief starts giving our children inferiority complexes, that's when it's a problem with your kind. We got to quit doing this. Take these images or these idols out of your houses and replace them with the reflection of you and your own melanin. Empower your children. 
empower your own mind. We have to stop with the artificial God concepts. Artificial information, artificial foods, artificial birth, artificial murders, artificial cultures, artificial white noise, artificial AI, artificial intelligence, artificial hair, artificial makeup, gotta talk about that too, artificial gods. What's real, y'all? What's real? Have, have we read anything that's real yet? We are in a sensory deprivation tank, being fed images of lies, sounds of lies, taste of lies, feelings of lies. Our senses have been hijacked. Our endocrine, our whole glandular highway have been hijacked. When are we going to wake up like Neo did, unplug himself from the matrix, he looked over, he seen all the other sensory depri deprivation tanks or what they call pods, and he ran and woke everybody up. Who on that mission with me? Raise your hand. So if you really believe that, and if you really going to do that tonight, if you got any of this bull crap in your refrigerator, throw it away. Don't say, I'm just going to eat this last chicken. <laughs> Let the last chicken wing be your last chicken wing. Huh? Damn, I got a half a beard and I ain't hit yet. It was left over from the fight last night. No, go pour it out. Huh? I got just two more Rillos. I'ma roll on these last, the rest I'ma just do weed tea. I'ma gonna roll these last blunts up though. Then you look up, a year later, you still rolling up that last blunt. True change start now. You hear me? Hear me. Hear me. Next slide. Uh oh, artificial superheroes. Huh? You see that? I remember it was about two years ago. My son Eliah. Eliah Yaki Hickman. It's my little dude. He's four now. Uh, I gave him a toy, not realizing what I was doing, but you know me, I just love giving my son toys, but I end up giving him a black Superman because I don't believe in having toys in my house that don't look like me. So I gave him a black Superman, but I didn't realize he was going to family members' houses and watching Superman. So I gave him black Superman, he told me, no Abba, he speak Hebrew, he told me, no Abba, this ain't the right Superman, Superman white. It crushed my heart because why do your superhero have to look like another people outside of your species? So I'm constantly breaking it down to them and telling them and I realized I had to go through my house and go through television and put locks on everything. So it took me six months. I made sure that all the superheroes were black. I spent a lot, and that's crazy too, that shows you some conspiracy going on. I went on Amazon to buy the black superheroes. They were $40 more than the white superheroes. $40. Some was $120 more. Black Flash? That deal cost $300 for Black Flash. Only this small. But anyways, I spent the money and I revamped it. I literally went on YouTube. I found something called Black Sand. Have y'all ever seen that? Amazing. It's all black characters. And I literally, I just constantly reprogrammed him. This one I really it set in. I said, damn, we programmed. I reprogrammed my son's whole frontal lobe, his whole cerebral cortex in six months. Six months. <laughs> to, to, to the point where he started running up. I got a whole video. If y'all go back through my YouTube, it's a video of me and my son, and he running up on me with his toys. You powerful just like that's them. And, yeah, and that's Spider-Man. And all of them look just like you, man. Education you, is Robert. you. You welcome, man. You welcome. You welcome. That's yes, that's yes, that's Black Superman. And I'm on there really holding back tears. I'm just like, see, this is why we need to change the toys in our crib. I'm amped in the mug because I'm seeing the actual sociology in the way his brain interacts with himself by being able to identify with something that looked like him but feels greater than him. So when we get home, we need to change these toys to our children. And if, if you Caucasian, I think you should have Caucasian toys. You shouldn't have black toys. See, this is what I'm saying. I'm not playing a race game. I'm playing a real game. You need, your God need to look like you. 
Your superheroes need to look like you. I think if you Hispanic, you need to have Hispanic superheroes. That way we are uh, uh, literally attaching ourselves to our identity and that's what bring people together. That's what creates civilization. Everybody is basking and bobbing in their own culture. Artificial information, <laughs> artificial news, artificial intelligence, artificial births, artificial murder, artificial hair, artificial food, artificial makeup, artificial noise, artificial colors, artificial superheroes, artificial everything. We got to stop this and stop this now. Next slide. Artificial history. The sun tells me that this is a lie. The sun. I don't even need a book to read about melody. The sun tells me that this is a lie. Artificial history. Artificial toys, artificial information, artificial stories, artificial heroes, artificial movies, artificial history, artificial hair, artificial food, artificial education. This is a very big one because how can you teach a people that haven't been through the same things you've been through? I remember I was in the fourth grade. I was in Jamestown Elementary in St. Louis, Missouri. And I had a white female teacher and she was teaching me about slavery. And it felt so uncomfortable. Cause I'm looking, I'm like, damn, you telling me your people did my people like this? And you teach them, you teaching this to me? And it never really made sense, but the way it made me feel, I remember, in the seventh grade, when I heard the same thing, it brought me back to that feeling. I'm like, man, that made me feel little as a damn, I felt lower than a snail hearing it. And then hearing it from a person who ancestors participated in it. So it, it got me thinking, shouldn't we be hearing about the struggle, the monstrosities, the, the genocide of our people by our people? Because at least our people, since they've been through that transgenerational epigenetic inheritance, it will be a solution that follows it. So you know what that made me think of, y'all? Y'all ready? What that make me think of? Artificial information, artificial news, artificial sweeteners, artificial births, artificial murder, artificial, 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 artificial. Y'all get it? Artificial everything. Next slide. Uh-oh. Artificial music. Ooh-wee. Don't worry, y'all. I, I just got off my music. I was still bumping Tupac and everything, so I ain't gonna even dive deep into this because I still feel victimized by it. And I'll be a hip I'll be a hypocrite to sit here and act like that if a boozy track come across the radio that I won't listen to it for at least two seconds before I turn it off. <laughs> but guess what, we ain't gonna listen to that. My children, talking about the genocide of our people, talking about black and black crime, talking about murdering one another, talking about taking the innocence of the little black girls, talking about turning our black goddesses and black queens into hoes. Women defiling themselves. Women showing things that only person to ever post see is their husband. Y'all know what that made me think about? <laughs> artificial information, artificial news, artificial music, artificial intelligence, artificial food, artificial air, artificial pollutants, artificial sweeteners, artificial everything. We gonna wake up tonight?
wonderful, very informative. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Life changing. Bro, he did so much for my life. So that's that's a DMV, man. Yeah. Hey, yeah. DMV all day. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yes, it's much better. I, I love watching his videos, but watching him in action is something different because you get to feel his energy and his passion for what he does. Yeah. And it's infectious. Oh, I love the cinema. Yeah. I came from Atlanta to here. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's going really good. Yeah. I'm just excited still. And I'm learning a lot of things that I did not thought I knew, but yeah. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's really insightful. A great crowd. Yeah. Everybody trying to get it. Yeah. Very awesome. Yeah. Being informative. I found out about you just less than a week ago. Yeah. And uh, was absolutely connecting to you vibrationally, what you were speaking on. And I drove down from New York this morning, booked a hotel, came to see you. And I'm, I'm very appreciative and have absolute respect for what you're giving to this world and the community out here. And uh, I'm a sound healer, sound practitioner, and, uh, based out of New York, Shakti mm -hmm. Tara. So I'm, I'm honored to be here and, and be uh, able to attend this divine knowledge that you're speaking. Dope. Love y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. appreciate Thank you. you. Peace and blessings, God. Peace and blessings. Yeah, keep doing the good work for the people, you know, elevating us, helping us, you know, clean up our cell structure, get right, you know. Um, like I said, I spoke to him earlier. That man helped me change my life. I've been on the alkaline diet for 18 months. Cured my diabetes from your kid. Yeah. You know? He blessing us. Yes, he's a blessing. I appreciate all the knowledge that he is storing to people. I'm so excited to yeah. have him. I'm going to meet him soon. This is the first opportunity I had to come see him. I just really had to. I learned about your kid maybe about a year ago. Um, and it was more so with me transitioning into being vegan and then just learning about health and wellness and just totally like healing your yourself i've always believed in herbs like it's, it's crazy i tell everybody i'm a nurse by profession but i don't believe in convention, conventional medication but he's such a blessing to um, everybody everybody i know i tell about yaki anybody going through any kind of ailments disease processes i always put them on to him look at these videos you know i even tell him about he sell the herbs you don't have to go far for the information it's right there and i trust everything he says this is actually a dream come true. I feel like I believe that I manifested this. Um, I was having like some medical problems, but I've been following him. And I was going through a lot. So about maybe a month ago, it was announced that he was going to be here in Philly. And I just, I was on my way to St. Louis. <laughs> but since he's here, I'm here. And I'm just grateful that he's even giving us the information to take us out of the delusion. So we can grow ourselves, help our families. And that's just what I'm here for. We've been following you for a few months and changed our life, changed our outlook and our perspective in all aspects. Uh, so just keep doing what you're doing, keep studying, getting downloads and sharing them with us. And you truly are saving your people right now. Yeah. So appreciate that. Thank you for waking us up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. I see. Burn, bring your energy, showing up, showing out. But oh, you're doing amazing things. And yeah, uh, I love you. You're an inspiration to us young brothers all. Please keep doing what you're doing. We're going to keep following. Definitely looking forward to the book. And just thank, thank you for everything, brother. Thank you for everything. I appreciate him. I have been blessed by him. I've, I've gotten healed through him. And I'm going to keep on following him. Thank you so much. I mean, he has helped me so much as far as trying to heal myself. I lost 20 pounds thanks to him eating a lot of fruits and everything.